Today, guys, I want to take a look at this camera I've had stowed away. My parents bought this for me. I believe it was right around 75 or so, 1975. And this thing has seen a lot of use. I think it looks excellent. I mean, I uh, use this thing a lot. I'll go over it and show you. But um, use this. I mean, I can just remember back in the day shooting film, Tri-X, um, black and white, uh, color films. Um, I learned a lot with this camera uh, and learning how to do things manually instead of just having a camera where you just set it on automatic and just shoot away. That's how I learned how to meter things and uh, so I think it was an excellent camera. So we're going to take a look at this. So as you can see it says SLR1 JC Penny. And the lens is Ausgena DDR, serial number of the lens, 9204953, and it is a f2.8 focal length of 50 millimeters, your standard lens. And I'll tell you, I did quite a few pictures of stars with this. And I was able to use this thing wide open at up 2.8 and did a really nice job. And so while I was preparing for this video, I googled SLR1 JCPenney. And lo and behold, I find a website that has all kinds of these Practica. You can see the various versions. And so I thought that was very interesting because I don't have any data on this don't have any instruction manuals which I'm not even sure at this point if it came with one I'm sure it did and here you see the producer and the production period December of 1972 to March of 1977 so like I said that's within the time frame and uh, some other information so I was very happy to see this it's uh, a lot of useful information and I remember wanting this camera because I wanted to do pictures uh, basically of the stars also general pictures you know to learn and stuff because I had been using a uh, box camera I think it took 620 roll film and so then I was able to take pictures with uh, at the time I had a four and a quarter inch Edmund scientific reflector so this was a very important camera to me that started my uh, that really got me into the next level from the box camera into 35 millimeter and here on that same page we see some pictures Now the lens came equipped originally with a plastic lens cap that fit over the outside diameter of this front of the lens and I replaced it at some point with this 49 millimeter metal one. I must have felt at some point that this was, would have just been better and so, so that's what was on here. So this is not the original lens cap. And as stated earlier, this is a 50 millimeter focal length lens, your standard lens at the time, f2.8 all the way to f22. And as you can see, it had actually it, it, they, they still work good. Had half f stops in between. And I was able to use this, like I said, wide open on the stars. And it did a really nice job of, of producing sharp images t to the edge. So let's take that lens off. It has what is known as a 42 millimeter diameter, M42 by 1 millimeter, which is uh, the pitch, 1 millimeter between each thread. And here you see a close-up of that. And this lens is just in spectacular condition as far as 
damage wise or anything uh, you know to the outside to the lens elements I have never had to touch to clean these lenses unbelievable now it is sticky here so right now it's at infinity but it sticks right about there and frees up about there so obviously with the lens this old I haven't used this thing in ages and then um, your f-stop ring it turns as I showed it turns nice and smooth and then if we look let me set it to f-22 this had a unique system which I'll show you in the camera body there's the pin in which I'll do a close-up later this bar when you took the picture it would let me turn it this way it would come up because this is situated at the bottom like this so that bar would come up hit this and for as long as the exposure was on would push that pin in and here's what would happen it would now close the aperture to whatever you had it set at and then if you were on uh, two seconds one second bulb whatever it would stay open as soon as the exposure was done it opened up a little something about the uh, M42 by one millimeter uh, screw thread on that uh, lens the M42 mount was first developed by Carl Zeiss at their Jenna plant in 1938. The M42 thread mount cameras first became well known under the Practica brand and thus the M42 mount is known as the Practica thread mount. The M42 mount was also used by Pentex, thus it is also commonly known as the Pentex thread mount despite the fact that Pentex did not originate it. Let's take a look at the camera body starting from the back side and as you can see as with a lot of older cameras this I don't know um, uh, I'm not sure what kind of material I don't know what you would call it but it is starting to come loose as you can see here down around the bottom and around here so it's still still on up here but down towards the bottom it's said it's coming loose on the front side it's looking good there's nothing coming off here here you see the other the, the, the back side but the front edge of it looking at the bottom we have the quarter 20 tripod uh, socket area this is what you would do when you were done with the roll of film and you want to wind it back in you push that button in that disengaged the inside sprockets and allowed you to wind your uh, film back into the roll and here we see Pentacon Germany East and then looking close up on that bottom plate I mean look look how good that actually is that's all those years here we get a closer view we see the uh, M42 by one inch female threads here that accepts the lens see the front portion that's uh, machine flat for the lens to accept and then here how many new photographers know what this is that's your shutter release and you had a standard I got plenty of these and it would screw in there and then you would activate it and that uh, would be hands-free when it was on a tripod you didn't want anything shaking that was your shutter re uh, where, where your shut well that's your shutter release but then that's where your cable release would go in right there screw in right there today everything is electronic releases 
looking at the front, we do see it looks to be like a dent there and, and a, a divot in here, a dent. Don't recall how that ever happened. So this body wouldn't be considered pristine, but I would say it's in very good shape for the years. Up top you have your standard hot shoe. Here's your viewfinder. Your film advance, which is sticky. It doesn't work as good as it should, but again, all those years, here's your film counter. It would reset once you uh, pop this and put the film, it would reset to zero. And then here's your shutter speed dial. So it had your flash sync, I believe it was 1 25th of a second, your bulb 1, and then 8 seconds, 16, and then uh, 30th, maybe that that might have been, I'm trying to think, that may have been your uh, 1 30th of a second for your strobe, I don't recall anymore, you may have set it to 1 30th of a second then, yeah, and then maybe this was, I, I, you know, I don't know, somebody knows, let me know. So you probably set it there for flash pictures. And then the fastest shutter speed was a thousandth of a second. And here, you simply, there was no lock on it. You just, you could pull up on it to open up the back. Had the little lever here, the crank lever, to re re rewind your film. And like I said, there was no lock. You could sim simply just pull up on it. And then your back would open up. And then here's your film guide rails here. And then here you can see the advance mechanism. Now, and I'll show you this from the front side. There's, there's your shutter curtains, but it does not fire. So it will not activate shutter does not work so the camera is, is inoperable if the shutter worked this thing would still work but the shutter I, for some reason I don't know what it is quite uh, what the problem is but it, it's it's seized up and then this is the back you could see where this this like spring type deal would hold your uh, film canister uh, pair you know in there and then this is where your film rolled on So when you closed it, it would keep your film flat to the uh, focal plane of the lens so that your images would be sharp. Here you see the, the lug for the camera strap. All original. So next we're going to take a look into the mirror box before we go over anything else. And there you see the screen that uh, the image would be focused on. And then here is your mirror so that obviously light comes in, it gets bounced up into the pentaprism here. And I want you to take note of what looks like rust right here. back there I think that's the shutter curtains I don't know if rust got on there or something that the shutters do not fully uh, roll and, and, and work and we'll show you that now I want to show you the mechanism here remember I told you on this lens how it would hit that pin this bar it's it's interesting it's this big bar up front and so your camera lens sits like this and so when that bar moves forward, the mirror flips up, whether it's a thousandth of a second or in bulb, and that bar, as it moves forward, pushes this pin, keeps it closed, and then when, the sh when you're done with the exposure, the bar goes back and the mirror is, 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 goes down. But in this case, 
the mirror doesn't go down automatically and I'll, I'll show you but it's quite a nice system there you can see that bar and you can see the, the mechanics of it there all mechanical there you can really see that rust what I call rust back in there that reddish brown so now let's take a look at this if we take and cock the shutter get ready or advance the film that that sets everything because remember if you in the old days with these kind of cameras if you took a picture and didn't cock the shutter it wouldn't release so once you activate it you pull the shutter okay and then let's do this you should be able to see that bar come up I'm going to trip the shutter you see that come forward now this is set to thousands or 500 whatever it's so it should have should have taken the picture this should have came forward and automatically then done this should have gone back and the mirror drop but it isn't so what I found is whatever mechanism that is I've got to push this bar back so you heard that these and you can see right here where that bar moved up then I've got to take and come in here and let me see if I can see this in front of the camera it's hard to do it's hard to see this there then I have to trip that so whatever mechanism that is that activates all this at one time isn't working properly so we'll advance it and then keep your eye on this piece right back here this bar and it's got a pin in there just like that and I'll push this forward or push it back that that, that uh, F, uh, aperture bar there I'll call it so when that goes back that should drop down the mirror and it's not you can see something back here fall down but I have to activate it manually Again, it's hard to do this when you're in the it's hard to do this when you're behind the camera because you're not seeing it like you should well there it is and so even if I push put the mirror up manually it sticks Now something I'm going to show you on the side of the lens is this little uh, thing here. So that is so that you could, if you wanted to check your depth of field, that was your depth of field preview, where today everything's electronic. So you, you had a manual depth of field preview by pushing that back towards the camera body. And I'll show you, it's got it's set at, F, uh, at F22. So now you could check, okay, you could you could get a visual of your depth of field. next thing I'm going to do is just to show you how that works if it uh, was working properly open and close but I'm going to cock the shutter then I'm going to trip the shutter and you're going to see where that lens will automatically the aperture will close down for the picture and again if everything was working it would close down it, it, it would it, the, the, the uh, shutter would open close down the lens the mirror would go up just before the exposure and then the shutter would close and everything would go in reverse and again by taking my finger off we should have had everything in reverse but it's not doing that so but I just thought I'd show you really cool mechanical uh, the, the, the way the mechanics worked in these old cameras so guys I'm saving the best feature here for last 
as you can see built around this uh, take up spool is where it says ASA your 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 uh, your speed now it's known as uh, ISO International Standards Organization but I'm trying to I can't remember what Amer uh, American Standard Association maybe ASA that's how they always rated film back in the day and it looks like it's set at 100 well no I've got to set all right let me move this over I've got to set this little pin there that's what I rotate and there's no lock on it so but you got to get in there and then that's okay so you match that up here with the black line here to whatever your uh, camera speed is so I've got that set to 100 and then what you got here is match needle so you would turn this and as you can see that needle moving and then you had that round circle once you centered and this was taking incident readings so the light incident falling on this photo cell so that's what that was doing and so you would match that and then you'd come down here and you could read directly it's showing one second at f22 and then this is showing uh, uh, 1 one twenty fifth at f2 you know 1 30th at f4 by just using this match needle here something else it also had you see this DIN there used to be a DIN number also and I don't know if that was like a foreign or a metric side you know but they had a DIN number which always corresponded to the ASA so if you were using DIN you could set it down here but it would have you know like a, what is that DIN 21 looks like is the same as ASA 100 so you had the option of how you wanted to set that and so to be clear what you would have to do is if I'm shooting a subject here okay I'm gonna shoot this I would have to take the camera I want the light falling on the subject so I'm not taking a reflected reading I want to take a reading of the light that is falling on the subject so I'd go to if this was the subject I'd have to go with the camera come to where the subject is take my reading pointing to where the camera would be so the light falling on the subject is the same light falling on the meter then I would go in front of the subject and then I would take my picture 